Hi, today I'm going to talk about designing and laser cutting these puzzle coasters. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today is a game in itself. The, this is a puzzle. These are all little puzzles, but they're also coasters. And I'd hold it up more straight so that you could see it better, but if I did, everything would just fall out because the only thing that's attached here is this black frame, which is fused to the white background, and all the puzzle pieces are loose. This is a very traditional quilt block design that I chose here. It's called Flying Geese. And the great thing about flying geese is that it's simple, but it's flexible. So this is the basic version of it right here. But by changing the color of different uh, pieces or by rearranging the pieces themselves, you can get a lot of secondary designs. So you can see pinwheels or, or cubes or arrows. So it's a great uh, kind of endless set of combinations, set of puzzles. I'm, uh, I like making coasters because I think coasters is a really good form factor for experimenting with new design ideas or new materials or techniques because they're small and they're, they're manageable, but if it works out, if your experiment works out, it, it makes for a great present to give to other people. So I really like how these turned out. I'm going to talk to you today about how I designed it. It's a very simple design in Adobe Illustrator how I cut it on the laser cutter, and also the very simple assembly. I put a picture of an actual flying geese block into my drawing as a reference. I'm going to build this up from the smallest components, which are basically two triangles. At first I thought I could do these by using a pen tool and snap to grid, but I really found I needed to use the polygon tool. So you click on the polygon tool and you tell it that you want three sides. Now what I'm trying to create here are isosceles triangles, which means that two of the sides are the same. I don't know what to do with this radius field, so I'm just going to, going to ignore it. I'm going to create the triangle and I'm going to get it to the right size by using the transform function and putting in the height to one inch and the width to two inches. And that's all it takes to create my first larger triangle, which is considered the goose in the design. Now there's the smaller triangle, and this is considered the sky in the design. And I could get the base length by doing some math about the diagonal of a two inch square, but you can also just use the measuring tool and get an, a close enough number, but the actual number is 1.4142. That's the length of the base, and then the height is half of that. So now I'm just going to start copying and pasting these two into the different pieces. So this is a flying goose, and this is a flying goose unit, and this is the full flying geese block. The only other things I have to draw are the outline of the coaster itself to cut the back. So this is four and a half inches with rounded corners. Then I have to add the inner square to create the frame. My first guess at this was 4.1 inches, but you're going to see that after cutting it, I had to change that dimension significantly. For the actual cut sheets, I had one sheet that was all of the sky units to do one coaster. I also had a version of that that had the frame around it, so I would use this if I was cutting one of the black acrylics. Then I had a geese only uh, cutting sheet and a geese plus a frame cutting sheet. The final piece was just the simple background of the coaster used to cut white acrylic. I used 3 16 inch acrylic. That's what I use for all of my tokens. It feels really nice in your hand and of course I had a lot of that acrylic laying around from my token work. So I use that for the frame and for the pieces of the puzzle. Only the background, the white background, was an eighth inch. I used opaque black acrylic for some of the frames, but I also tested a transparent smoke acrylic for the frame. For the puzzle pieces, I tried both uh, opaque acrylic 
but I also did some fluorescent transparent acrylic to see how that looked. That's what the orange is. When I had all the pieces cut, I sat down and actually put together one of the puzzles just to see how well things fit. And that's when I really saw what the impact of kerf was when you have this many cut pieces. You want a nice balance between it being easy to put together and it looking good. And this just left way too much extra space. I ended up basically with a four inch square. Now that I know the frame is the right size, I can go ahead and actually fuse it together. So I do always use these granite blocks to help me line things up. It's not easy to open these weld-on containers. This is what I'm using, a very fast set weld-on acrylic solvent. These evaporate easily, so they have metal insets in the top that you have to remove before using them. You suck up just the tiniest bit into this applicator bottle. Then you squeeze it along the edges and it'll actually wick under the rest of the frame. You only have seconds before it's permanently set. That's all the assembly. The rest is getting the paper off of the puzzle pieces. I usually soak pieces like this in simple green, but I thought I would try something that smelled a little better. But this actually wasn't strong enough, so I'll be going back to simple green. So that's all it takes. Here's four of, of what are many, many different options for how these pieces can be arranged. If you find one you just love or you get tired of using them as puzzles, you can always fuse the pieces in place. I have lots of other fun projects I'm working on. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.